So how big should your first game be? I would say that every project is big if it's your first one, but scope creep is definitely a thing. So I mean like, how big should it be? Well, here are six things to consider when thinking about the scope of your game. So number one, what are your goals with this game? Are you just trying game dev out and trying to prove to yourself that you can do it? In that case, I would recommend doing game jams. A lot of big indie developers that we know and love today, like Lucas Pope or Team Cherry, actually started out by doing game jams. Game jams are a really great way to test your skills within a specific time frame. You'll also have a community around you who will test and play your games, giving you feedback so that you can learn and grow or maybe you're just trying to get into this as a hobbyist dev in that case scope is really more about like what you want to accomplish if you're looking to do a bigger project and you're willing to take the time to do that the time frame doesn't really matter as much for you if you're trying to make this a full-time business then there's probably a lot more to consider one thing i would caveat here if you are trying to make this a full-time business is make sure that you don't do that lightly like make sure that you don't quit your job without having some kind of financial plan in place either having support along the way through a loved one or that you have some kind of safety savings that you're able to tap into so that you can devote this amount of time into your business without having to make money. Even then, it can be really stressful, trust me. So in that case though, there are arguments to be made for either making smaller games or making bigger projects. I would say for starting smaller games, there's a little bit less risk involved. The turnaround time can be a little bit tighter. You don't have to spend years and years and years on one project. Some smaller indie games like this that I'm talking about are like Ape Out or Getting Over It or uh, Papers Please. Something kind of along those lines that could take you anywhere from a couple months to maybe a year year and a half to create. I would say the downside to smaller games is that you're probably gonna be making a little bit less money. Wow! Whereas if you make a longer game project, you're gonna be spending years and years making this game. There's a lot more riding on whether or not that game is successful. So second thing to consider are, what are your strengths? I lift things up and put them down. Some really great advice that I've heard is focusing on your weaknesses first. That way you're developing those a little bit further and then bring out the big guns, your strengths. For me, I feel like the thing that I'm learning the most at the moment is coding, and so I put that first in the development of my current game, Money Laundry. I decided that I would work out all of the mechanics first in the gameplay, and then get into the art and making things look more pretty. So I think there's something to be said there for putting the bones together first, and then kind of fleshing out your game a little bit further. Number three is how replayable is your game? There's so many talks out there about how huge replayability is in the current game market. Generally speaking, there's a lot less risk when your game is highly replayable playable and what do I mean by that if you were able to watch a streamer and they played a game and they had a very unique experience and then you went and you played the same game and had a completely different and unique experience then that game would be considered a lot more replayable so creating those unique player experiences is what I'm talking about here number four what genre is your game obviously there are some genres that are easier to create than others especially for a first game for instance when I first started I was trying to make a metroidvania i mean i love metroidvanias but making that as a first game was definitely a mistake and it didn't really get me very far i love hollow knight but we all know how long those games can take team cherry if you're listening silk song better be on us here so I would definitely recommend for a first game, trying to find a genre that you can wrap your head around, something that maybe you enjoy playing. I mean, like I was saying in my previous point, games that have more of a unique player experience, more replayability, games like simulators, RPGs, strategy games, sandbox games, all of those genres seem to be pretty good for indie games. Number five, I would recommend trying a demo sized version of your game first. You're gonna see what works, what doesn't work, what you should change. I would also recommend here focusing primarily on your core gameplay loop. This can also help you determine whether or not to stick with the game. I was working on a demo before I got into my current project and decided not to continue with it. Since it was a demo and not years of work, it was a lot easier to let it go and pivot to a different project. So prototyping is a really good way to start out. Number six, I would say look at other indie games. 
specifically ones that are within your genre that you're trying to create and see how they did things. Take a look at the development time for those projects. See if that project was created by a solo developer or a whole team. Also see what kind of scope they had. Certain genres have certain expectations that go along with them. So you wanna make sure that you're picking a game that is within the right genre for this first game, seeing what these other indie developers have created, developing and honing your skills while also bringing out your core strengths in order to make the best possible game that you can. And that's pretty much it. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. And if you liked this video, I'm sure you're gonna like this next one where I talk about my first year and a half as a developer. Check it out.